With hurricane season ramping up, we're going to take a look at how we can read data from the National Hurricane Center that lets us plot the model tracks of a hurricane throughout time and the future track. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to look at getting data from the National Hurricane Center and plotting it on a map, and we're actually going to make an animation of the forecast track of Hannah, which just struck the Texas Gulf Coast. All right, so they were at the ftp.nhc.noaa.gov site, and we will zoom in so you can see this link a little bit more clearly. But here what we see are all of these .dat.gz files, and you can find the storm number in any of the NHC records. So you find your storm, and you go ahead and download that file. In this case, we're going to look for storm 082020, which is right here. Over in our notebook, we can see that I've got the .dat.gz file here. And so that file is gzipped. So what we're going to need to do is actually unzip that file before we can read it. And though it is called .dat, it's actually just a CSV file. So let's do some imports. I'm going to import gzip. I'm going to import pandas as pd and matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And of course, we'll use our matplotlib inline magic. Now I'm going to use gzip to open the file, and I'm actually going to do that with a context manager, so I don't have to remember to close the file and so on. Remember, context managers are with. So with gzip.open, our file name, and I'm just going to use tab completion there, and our file mode is read. I'm going to open it as the file handle f. Now we're going to use pandas to read this CSV. I know the forecast columns, and this is available on the National Hurricane Center website. There is a guide to all of the hurricane operations for each year, and in there they outline the format of each of these files. So the forecast columns that we're going to be interested in are the basin that the hurricane is in, the cyclone number, the warning date time, the model track that we're looking at, as these are all model forecast tracks, the forecast hour, and the lat and lawn of the storm. Now we can use pandas to read this in. So my data frame is pandas read CSV. Our file object no header, no index column. We're going to use the names of our forecast columns. And finally, we're going to use column numbers 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, so we got a name error because we had a typo there. Now let's look at the head of this data frame. So there's our basin, Atlantic Basin, Cyclone 8, the date time, the model, the forecast hour. So that model actually goes back previous 24 hours, which would be the track of it over the last 24 hours, in the lat and the lawn of the eye of the storm. Now notice the lat and the lawn are formatted a little oddly. A uh, latitude of 229 degrees north doesn't really make sense, especially not in a tropical setting. And really something more like 22.9 degrees north would make sense, which is exactly what the case is. So these are multiplied by 10, which is a common technique we see in more uh, fixed precision files. And then they have the N, S, W, or E prefix on them. So we need to write something to interpret that and maybe make sure that it's doing what we want. I'm going to create a little function that's going to be called lat lawn to float and it's going to take values. Remember we always need to put a doc string in. Convert NHC strings to floating point lat lawns. 
I'm going to create an empty result list. You could do this with a list comprehension, though it would be a very complicated one. I think this is probably clearer. And we're going to actually iterate. Uh, this could be a list. We don't want to force it to be an array coming in, and there's not that many values, so we can do this uh, with a loop and still not have a huge time penalty. So for v in values, if the last character of that string, so the thing at the minus one index, is equal to s, or if the last character is equal to w, then we're going to have a divisor of minus 10. Else, our divisor is 10. So this is going to take care of the sign change for south and west values, whereas east and north values will just get divided by 10. So then result.append we're going to cast the string everything but the last character, so we'll slice up to but not including the last character as an integer. And we're going to divide it by the divisor. Finally, after we've done that for every value and values, we're going to return the result. Again, this may not be the most elegant way to do it, but if you're trying to get a map running very quickly, there's certainly nothing wrong with this, and for as many values as we have, this this file has a little over 17,000 rows. It's actually very inconsequential in terms of time. So let's do a quick test of our new function to see if it does what we think it does. Formal testing is always a good idea, and this is certainly not formal testing, but it'll let us know if we are on the right track. So I'm going to make a simple case for each north, south, east, and west. And we get the divided by 10, so 1 north, minus 1 south, 1 east, minus 1 west. That looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and use this on our data frame now. So the data frame lat is going to be calling latlon to float on those values. Similarly, the data frame lon is going to be calling our latlon to float Notice using the tab completion to avoid typing all these long names, though they make the code very readable. And now let's look at the head of our data frame again. That looks a lot better. Those look like lat and lons that we would be expecting. So now we're ready to start making a map, or in this case, we're going to make an animation so we can see how the forecast evolved over time. So I'm going to import cartopy.crs, the coordinate reference system, as ccrs. I'm going to import cartopy.feature as cfeature. All right, so now we're ready to make our map. The map coordinate reference system, I'm going to use a Lambert conformal projection with a central latitude of 45 and a central longitude of minus 100. Our data CRS, these are just plain latlon values. So that is going to be plat curry, or I don't have a projection. We're ready to make our figure, which we do with plot.figure. And we'll go ahead and set a fig size to something that's a nice big plot, like a 17 by 12. And then we're going to create our axis. We're going to do that with plot.subplot. We just want one row, one column, one figure, but we're doing this so we can specify a projection, which is our map coordinate reference system. We're going to add a feature. We're going to add a coastline feature, call it with scale, and we'll do 1 to 50 million, and a line width of 0.75. And you can tweak these to be to your liking. We'll add another feature of states. We'll just leave the, the default for now in terms of with scale. Though you could go back and crank that scale down. And we'll give that a line width of a half. Now, since we're making an animation, 
we're going to use the artist animation, which we've talked about before. I'm going to make an empty list of artists, which are all the things that are going to get drawn in each frame. So what we want to do is iterate over all of the warning date times, so when it was issued, and then for each issued time, we want to iterate through all of the models and plot them as unique tracks. So we're going to have a nested for structure here. All right, so for warn DT in our warn DT items dot unique. So this is going to just get us every individual warning date time. First, I'm going to create a text on the axis. I'm going to put it in the center in X and just above in Y. And it's going to be an F string that says issued and then the warning date time, which we could format that, but I think it'll be fine as it is for this example. And our horizontal alignment is going to be center. We need to specify a transform, which in this case is going to be axis relative. And a font size of 24. Now we need to create a list I'm going to call time step artists. So these are the artists that draw everything for this individual time step. It's going to be a list and the first element in it is going to be the text that we just drew. Our time data frame or a data frame that contains everything for this warning date time. I'm going to use df.loc and I want everywhere where the warn dt is equal to our warn dt value. All right, so now we've got all of the data for that individual warning date time. Now we need to loop through all of the models for that warning date time. So for model in our time data frame, models dot unique. So get all of the unique models that are there. The model path or our model data frame is going to be the time data frame dot loc everywhere that our data frame has that given model. So time df model is equal to the model that we're interested in. All right, so finally we have a data frame that contains one model at one time. So we can scatter plot it. I'm going to grab a handle to it and call it S. Our model path lawn model path lat. I'm going to go ahead and give them an alpha of 0 0.5. We need to specify a transform because remember these are not in uh, map coordinates or figure coordinates. These are in our plat curie, which we called data CRS. So we want to apply that transform. And that should get us our plot. Now, after each model, we want to add that artist S to our time step artists. After we're done with a given time step, we want to append, so artists.append time step artists. So here we're going to have a list of lists where each sublist is all of the things we want to draw in one frame. And finally, I'm going to set the extent of our plot because a couple of these models do have an initialization point that's at zero, zero or some other odd things. I'm going to go from minus 106 to minus 80 and 20 to 35. Again, we need to specify what those coordinates are in. They're not in map coordinates. They are in our plat curry, uh, which is actually our data CRS. We don't have to, to type that out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this cell. We've got a T missing there. All right, and while that's running, we're going to go ahead and do some imports. So from matplotlib, 
dot animation. We're going to import artist animation. And from IPython dot display, we're going to import HTML. You can see up here we have this beautiful figure that actually has everything plotted on it. You normally wouldn't see that if this were a uh, command line script that we were running. So I'm going to create the animation, call it anim. It is going to be the artist animation called on our figure, our artists. I'm going to set the interval to be one second per frame. And then we'll call an HTML viewer on our animation to JavaScript HTML. Again, you could save this out as a GIF or an MP4 or whatever you wanted. This will take just a little bit to render. But there we go. I'm going to play it forward. I'm actually going to speed it up a couple of clicks here. There we go. You can see we've got our time that's changing. And we can see the track of the storm. Now, the one thing that annoys me a little bit here is the models. There are different numbers of models for every time step. So the color changes. For example, this model, which is the only one that has previous 24-hour data in it of where the storm was, is changing just about every frame. So let's real quickly go ahead and fix that. So what I'm going to do is insert a cell above where I'm making my figure. And we're going to use this RC params call. This is just a different way to get all of the colors that are in the color cycler when you call plot over and over again. So axes, prop cycle, by key, and we want color. So if we print colors, you'll see there are all of the colors in the color cycler, so your blue and so on. All right, so I'm going to create a dictionary called model colors, empty dictionary. And then I'm going to do an iteration over all of the models using enumerate. So df model dot unique, and I'm calling this on our biggest data frame that could have the most different models. So it's going to get all of the unique models. We're going to enumerate over them, giving them a zero based index and a model. Then I'm going to assign this to our model colors dictionary with the key being the name of the model and the value being colors I modulo 10. So it will just cycle through the same 10 over and over again. So we run that. Let's go back down here to our scatter. And we're going to say color equals model colors based on the key of the model. So now let's run our cells again and take just a moment for everything to re-render. All right, so we're going to play, speed it up a little bit. And now you can see that, for example, that model is always blue. So the models are staying the same color. So if you want to see how a particular model did, for example, that red model that seems to be tracking a little bit further northward than most models and in a very straight line, whereas most models did this left turn here, you can see that visually. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.